It was just about a week ago when the White House released a statement later backed by Tesla that Elon Musk would be opening a portion of the supercharging network to non-Teslas. And just this week, we're getting our first glimpses of these retrofits that are going in. But before we get too deep in those details, I'm gonna provide a very high level summary of where we're at today. I will leave a link up here where you can see a more detailed video of the specifics of this program. For those of you who don't have a Tesla, obviously you're very excited about that. If you do have a Tesla, you're probably split. Let me know in the comments are you for this? Are you against this? Really want to get a feel for what the split is here. This is all a part of the $1 trillion infrastructure bill that was passed in November of 2021. As a part of that bill, $7.5 billion was earmarked for the charging network of 500,000 chargers from the Biden administration. This is all to help support their goal of 50% EVs by 2030 in the United States. The first $2.5 billion of those funds have been earmarked for the next five years, and that is going to go to the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure, CFI, grant program. Basically, at a high level, what this means is the charging equipment can't be made overseas if you want access to these funds. So to get this grant money, it's got to be made here. The agreement that Elon Musk made with the White House through Tesla is to open up 7,500 chargers for all EVs by the end of 2024. So over the next two years, there's going to be a gradual opening of these chargers for EVs, but it's actually even better than that because it's not just old chargers that you're gonna have access to. As a matter of fact, none of the old chargers are a part of this program. Here's how it breaks down. 3,500 new and existing V3 250 kilowatt chargers. As you may or may not know, those are Tesla's fastest charging chargers. What's nice about these also is they are dedicated lines. So if somebody's charging next to you, it does not split that charge. These are the best chargers that Tesla has on the road right now. There are rumors that the V3 chargers are going to be ramped up to 300 plus kilowatt charge rate very soon. And then the V4 chargers will be coming online shortly thereafter. So for a lot of EVs, 250 kilowatt or faster, does cover just about everything out there. There are a few vehicles out there right now that actually can support a faster charging speed than that. But most cars that you're going to see on the road, that is going to cover basically your full charging speed. The other 4,000 chargers will be destination chargers. So think of a level two charger like you may have in your garage. These are going to be at hotels, rest stops, places like that where you're gonna have access to it. Now it is gonna cost more money for you to charge on a Tesla charger if you don't have a Tesla. This is clearly outlined in their FAQs on their website. On top of all of that, Tesla is planning to double their existing footprints of superchargers here in the United States by the end of that two years as well. So not only are non-Teslas going to get access to new chargers, very reliable chargers by the way, but also existing Tesla owners are going to benefit from doubling the footprint of the existing supercharging network, which is great news for everybody. The math works out like this. It is estimated that Tesla has 17,000 superchargers here in the United States. If they double that over the next two years, that's almost 35,000 superchargers. And if we have 3,500 of them that are open to non-Teslas, it's about 10% of the total supercharging footprint. So giving you a little bit of perspective here, it's not every charger. And now a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Blinkist. The Blinkist app allows you to understand the most important things from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. With the help of Blinkist, you can discover new perspectives and broaden your horizons. With over 5,500 titles in 27 different categories, you will find content best suited for you. And being only 15 minutes means you don't have to spend a lot of time to get to the point. 2023 is the year for you to become the person you would like to be, and Blinkist is here to guide you. As some of you already know, I kicked off 2023 with some weight loss goals, and here at the end of February, I'm happy to announce I'm already down 18 pounds. I've been listening to weight loss guides and strategies on Blinkist, like seven powerful mindset changes for lasting weight loss. Sometimes it's just a little refresher, motivation that I need need to keep going and doing it in about 15 minutes that's the ticket for me and now with Blinkist Connect you can share your premium plan with someone else for no additional cost now both accounts have access for as long as you have an active account this allows you to share your benefits and recommend titles to each other so be sure to visit Blinkist.com forward slash bearded Tesla guy to get 25% off plus two memberships for the price of one 
You can also kick off your seven day free trial membership by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now we did just get our first glimpse of how this is gonna work. Thanks to Reddit, we get our first images of this retrofit happening. And it turns out this is in Verona, New York. This is the first one that we've seen a retrofit happening with the magic dock. We also have from Twitter at Anthony Henson EV, a video of that handle. He's pulling out the NACS handle showing you the CCS adapter is still in the unit. So this presumably as a magic dock is going to unlock if you're connected via the app or the website to be able to charge your CCS vehicle. We can also see a picture of a Rivian pulling up. However, it does not appear that this thing is plugged in, but it's assumed that sometime after this picture was taken, it was probably plugged in as a test. We can also see another image that shows you what equipment is required to make this retrofit. And it looks like it was super easy to do this. It does not require a lot of hardware to make this switch. It does appear that they're changing out the cable and they're changing out part of the housing. They're obviously including now a CCS adapter that's a part of the unit that will come out with the charging handle if you are indeed hooked up to this via the CCS connector. At this charging location, you can also see how this is going to be marketed to people as they pull up with a sign. It has a QR code that'll give you instructions. Basically, it takes you to this landing page, tells you to download the app, and once you do that, you can select charge or non-Tesla. The map is gonna show you where there's chargers available and you will select a site that's not locked and you'll select charge here. Your credit card information will already be saved on file. You'll scan a QR code and then it's going to connect you to that charger. It's just that simple. So it's really not a bad process for non-Teslas to go through this to be able to start charging. Now Tesla is going to charge you a premium for using their equipment and it's going to have idle fees, which many people in the CCS network may not be used to. So just plugging your car in and walking away is not a good idea because those idle fees can rack up. So on the pros side, if you do not drive a Tesla, this is fantastic news for you because you're going to have access to an extremely reliable and robust charging network here in the United States. In addition, it's going to be V3 charger, so it's going to be the fastest and the dedicated charging cabinets this is also great for your charging experience. You're not gonna have to split a cabinet between a 50 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt and a 300 kilowatt or what have you. It's just a 250 kilowatt charging cabinet. The other thing that we found at this particular location is all 12 stalls were retrofit. So the idea that maybe half of the chargers would be retrofit and the other half would not, that is not appearing to be the case. So it will be the entire charging station, at least in this example. Obviously they could have a hybrid model where some of them are split, but it's not looking like that's going to be the case. So these charging stations that will have the CCS connector, they're probably going to be all the charging stations there. On the flip side, there are some drawbacks. You are gonna pay a higher rate to charge your non-Tesla at these locations. I don't know specifically how much more you're gonna pay, but it's going to be more expensive than Electrify America or some of the other public chargers, but you will very likely have a charger that works every time you plug in. In addition, the other drawback here is the cable is not very long. It is set up to plug in a Tesla and their charging ports are all roughly in the same location. So backing in in a Tesla, plugging right in works really well. However, if you drive off Ford Mach-E as an example, it's gonna be really tough to see if that'll even reach your car. There's going to be a lot of cars where that charging port is not in an ideal location for the length of these charging cables. So for some of you, this may actually be bad news because you won't be able to reach. I am sure that there's going to be some sort of a extension that you can purchase, but Right now, that's not available and it doesn't appear to be coming either. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.